Giant Salvinia is a free-floating fern that prospers in aquatic settings. Currently, the Giant Salvinia is a problem in Texas. Since it grows right on top of the water, it blocks sunlight from reaching the life that resides beneath the surface. It does not attach itself to soil, and it takes out oxygen from the water, as a result killing both plants and animals. And to make matters worse, this pesky plant can double in size in just one week. We drove to Uncertain, Texas to visit with Darren Horton, president of the Cattle Lake Association, and with entomologist Lee Eisenberg, both who supervised the Giant Salvinia Eradication Project. They gave us a tour of the Morley Hudson Weevil Greenhouse and Shady Glade Resort, which is the first high-production weevil greenhouse facility in the world. Thankfully, researchers have come to find that the weevil, a small herbivorous beetle, can become an ally to battle the giant Salvinia. Weevils are usually only 6 millimeters or less in size, but 40 of these tiny creatures can eat 2 pounds of giant Salvinia in 2 weeks. However, as winter approaches, the harsh climate can kill most of the weevils, and with nothing in the giant Salvinia's way, it will continue to grow. Okay, starting over. The greenhouse is designed to uh, maximize production of the Salvinia weevil. The Salvinia weevil is the only uh, biological control agent that's shown to be effective against giant Salvinia. And um, the chemicals have not really been able to do the job up here. And um, so it's a numbers game about raising enough weevils and getting the work done because it's, it's very physical work to actually raise them and get them out on the lake. But that's what we do here. Um, the space has been used to maximize surface space here. This is a drive-through. These are workspaces between the tanks. So what you do when the numbers get high enough is to load it into those gray totes that are sitting there in that smart cart, and then you can actually wheel them up to the drive-through and load them on trucks and take them out to the lake and put them out in the infestation. And we did that on um, September 12th. Uh, we released about 35,000 weevils in an area called Willowson Woodyard, which is kind of sheltered, kind of uh, remote, and um, <clears throat> it's full of salvinia. It's chock full of salvinia. It's 200 solid acres of it. And in an area like that, we'll be able to do a good job of showing what we can do with the production from this greenhouse. And um, it's not likely to drift out. This thing is going to bite the dust here one of these days. Uh, it can't drift out. It's not likely to get sprayed because we have had a few sites that have been sprayed by overzealous uh, herbicide applicators. Um, so we think we'll be able to get good, really good data on what we can achieve with this facility. When did y'all start this project? It was about a year ago, really. It started when um, I presented to um, GCLA, which is the, the Greater Cadillac Association, and. Um, they were looking for a way to battle the Salvinia um, on their own, in addition to what was you know, being done at the time by A&M. And uh, so they kind of got behind my idea to um, produce a lot of weevils and get them out on the lake and started having fundraisers and people have donated time and in-kind donations and money. And uh, we partnered with um, state agencies and um, also getting a few grants. Well, Salvinia doesn't grow in um, salt or brackish water. Uh, it prefers um, slow moving or still water with lots, of, with lots of nutrients, which makes this side of Cattle Lake perfect for it. These are the backwaters, and uh, most of these lakes are eutrophic anyway, which is to say that there's a lot of nutrients present before you, um, you know, consider the input from lawns and farm fields and fertilizers and whatever else might be upstream. So uh, this is a, a excellent place from the Salvinia point of view to, uh, to live. Would you know about how much money y'all have put into this project? Uh, I think Darren could probably address the money better. I know um, it looks as though we have enough to carry on this project for a year and a half or so. And it's really been a grassroots effort. I mean, there's a lot of small groups and individuals that have um, contributed, and uh, nothing of any large magnitude. You know? So it's been a lot of people's efforts and sweat and uh, so on and so forth. Do you know about how much longer it would take to get rid of the Salvinia? Well, you know, that's a difficult question to answer because there's so many ifs. 
Uh, last year we had six to seven thousand acres of savanny out there. A lot of that got killed by the winter. Our weevils also got knocked back by the winter, but it's almost impossible to figure out exactly how many weevils are left because the stuff drifts around. It floats. I don't know if you know savanny is a floating fern, actually. Um, so that makes it kind of difficult, and we don't know as of yet what the production will be from this facility because there's really no other like it. There's nothing set up for production. But uh, so that's what we intend to do is get good data on that. But just let me point out that um, not only is it set up for the work that's going to be done, but we have heaters and we have fans so that we can, first of all, we can survive a really cold winter. You know, they, they won't freeze to death. Secondly, we should be able to warm the greenhouse up in the late winter, early spring and get a population growing and get a lot of eggs laid and so forth before the savannah starts to move on the lake. And, and that will be, I think, probably one of the most effective things we can do. We can cool it down in the middle of the summer when production would be lower because of stress from heat. And um, in this climate, I mean, you really have a five month window that you can rely on. And I think we can extend that on both ends. And uh, I think we'll have an effect all out of proportion to the size of the facility. Uh, so trying to hit a moving target, not knowing how much somebody will be there, what we can get done, what the weather's going to be like. You know, there's a lot of questions there, but I think within a couple of years we'll be able to show significant results and just let people know what we can actually accomplish. Uh, it, it will probably take more than one facility like this to get the job done. And then you still have to watch out for other invasives, other invasives. Would you be able to tell me a little bit more about the weevils? How do those help control the salvinia? Okay, the weevils are herbivores and they feed on the plant. The adults feed on the buds and the leaves, but the buds are preferred because they have more nitrogen. The, the larvae bore in the rhizome, they're stem borers. So between the two of them, when their numbers get high, they basically just destroy the plant. Um, it'll become so damaged, it'll become waterlogged and sink. And you can sometimes see that happen in a very short period of time, like in a week or so at Lake Steinhagen, where they're doing uh, biocontrol. Uh, they had about 300 acres just sink. Could you tell me how much damage this salvania causes? Salvania is a very, very damaging Invasive. Uh, as you can see, when this stuff forms a mat on the surface, and it can be one layer thick, it can be six inches of thick, a foot thick. When you have a, a, a continuous layer on the water, there's really no oxygen that can get into the water from the atmosphere, and there's no carbon dioxide that can get out. It changes the temperature. It, uh, it also blocks sunlight to aquatic plants that might be below the surface and to the algae that are a huge component of the planktonic community. So if you knock out the base of the food chain, which is the planktonic community, you really don't have a food chain. But uh, in the immediate, as far as immediate concern go, bass can't live in water with no oxygen in it. Could you tell me how it affects the locals here who live close to the lake? Uh, the local, it's caused a great deal of stress in the local economy, even um, this place, the Shady Glade. Uh, there's a lot of people who just simply don't want to come to the lake when there's, you know, when it's, there's that much stuff. Anyhow, they don't want to, like, rent the lakeside cabin and look out at plants, you know, at, a, at an invasive weed. Um, most typical outboards can't operate in Salvinia either because they're not able to pull in water to cool the motor. So uh, it has been very, very difficult, and the local economy depends uh, to a fair extent on this lake because it's been uh, a place for recreation and people catch big bass and lots of people love this lake, but if they can't use it, they're not going to come. Would you say that it's decreasing the number of tourism and the people who come to the lake? Uh, I think that has declined. Uh, there's some areas that seem to stay clear. And, um, you know, the, it, it varies a lot with the condition. Like this spring, it really wasn't bad. We had a lot of people come through because the Salvania had been knocked back by the winter. But there's no doubt that in the, overall, it, it has hurt the tourism industry. Can you tell me about how many volunteers come out and help with this greenhouse? It's really amazing the number of people that have uh, 
come out and help us since we began this project. Uh, the Greater Caddo Lake Association uh, has always depended on volunteers to operate. Uh, when we put out the call for volunteers, whether it's uh, swinging a sledge, sledgehammer to build these tanks that the uh, Salvinia grows in, or spreading the gravel out, uh, showing up to mow, uh, anything that we, anytime we call on volunteers, we get a good turnout. We use Facebook, we use email, we use our website. So uh, volunteers have been a huge part of this operation. We couldn't do it without them. What do you know about how much money it took to create this greenhouse? And about how many people and sponsors it took? We started out uh, with Greater Caddo Lake Association Labor Day Barbecue in 2013 an event that usually raises a couple of thousand dollars, raised over $11,000. And that was in September of 2013, which was the worst that Salvini has been here on the lake. Uh, Johnson's Ranch is one of the oldest inland marinas uh, in Texas, and you couldn't see across the water. It looked like a pasture. So uh, people were very concerned, and they were very generous. And that planted the seed to get this project going. And uh, Harrison County followed close behind the City of Uncertain, Cypress Valley Navigation District, Dallas Caddo Club. Uh, many organizations and local entities uh, became on board and through education we've convinced them that the giant Salvinia weevil is the only way to control the Salvinia. And so far we've raised enough money to construct the, the facility, operate it for about a year and a half, and we need to raise funds to operate it for another year and a half. So to date, we, we've received one grant from the National Fish and Wildlife Service. We have a couple of others that may come through, but to date we've, we've raised, uh, with in-kind donations, volunteer help, and money actually raised uh, $175,000 or so. And we need to raise another $150,000 approximately to operate it for another year and a half, which will be three years, which is, which is our goal. We don't have definite numbers because nothing like this has ever been done before. Everything that we've put together is an estimate. So once we operate for a few months and we have some history and we know how much it costs to operate each month, once we have a year under our belt and we know what it costs to operate it for a year, we'll have some solid numbers. But everything that we are putting together right now is estimated and it's uh, born of the experience of Lee, who has operated uh, greenhouse facilities in the past and uh, that's where we're at going forward. Okay, I hear that you're one of the locals here. How does it affect you? Well, uh, it's very frightening and uh, causes a lot of high anxiety. Uh, I'm just, a, I'm a property owner. I'm not a business owner here on the lake uh, and it's gonna affect my property value. Uh, Salvinia can devastate this lake. Uh, right now we've had a hard winter and we've had a lot of rain, so we've had a lot of water flow and it's washed out of the lake, which hasn't cured the problem. It's just displaced it over into Louisiana. But uh, if the Salvinia goes unchecked, it's gonna take over the lake, just like it did at Lake Bistano in Louisiana, where it covered the lake 100%. Property values will decline. I have friends who have their businesses here and depend on this lake to make a living. If they don't have people renting their bed and breakfast and they don't have uh, boats out on the water and if they're not at the grocery stores buying goods, uh, they're not staying in local hotels in, here in the county, uh, it's, it is going to be devastating. And we are not waiting for someone to get this problem under control, we are rolling up our sleeves and getting to work to solve it ourselves. Would you say if the Salvinia took over 100% of the waters, would it be too late to recover it? We, we don't know, but I think that a good guess would be yes, it would be too late. It certainly would be too late to, to save it as we know it today. Now, it may be saved in, uh, in a different state. It wouldn't be the same ecosystem. It certainly would uh, be devastating to uh, the ecosystem and, and a lot of the natu natural plants and uh, plant life. So if, if the lake became completely covered, it, it would be uh, a huge setback and it would be a shame. A shame. This is a, a, a one of only 32 places in the world that's designated a wetland of international significance under the Ramsar Treaty. Treaty. It's a it's a natural national treasure, and we simply cannot let that happen. Uh, what we are going to do is operate this facility. We're going to document our results. We're going to go to Austin when they get in the legislature gets in session and tell them what they're what we're doing. Educate them about the giant Salvinia, how it's a water consumer, and that it's coming to a lake near you and we'll operate the facility and we'll document our results. We'll go back in 2017 when they get back in uh, session and we believe that we will partner with somebody. If we can partner with somebody and have funds to operate this facility, then we will have a management program going forward into the future. The Salvinia on this lake will never be eliminated. It's not a traditional lake. It's a cypress forest in the water. There's so many areas of the lake that you cannot get to to control the Salvinia. 
the weevils can get back there. But the weevils will not eliminate the salvinia because that's their food source. So when the, pop, when the amount of salvinia goes down, the population of the weevils slows down naturally. As the, as the salvinia takes over, the population of the weevils takes off naturally. So what you get is a balance, and what we will end up with is a management program. All right, can you tell me about the tanks and how the water, how y'all recycle the water from the lakes? Okay, well everything here really is set up to make uh, it as favorable for the weevils as possible and also to handle the workload. So uh, we're pumping water, there's a lake pump in the yard or uh, near the boathouse across the street. We're filling the tanks with lake water and raising the salvinia in it, raising the weevils, it's really two-stage aquaculture. And when we release them, they will go back into lake water with identical chemistry or very close to what they came out of. So there won't be any shock, there won't be any accl acclimation uh, time. Uh, so that's the answer to that question. How did you build the tanks? What kind of materials did it require? Oh, uh, well, we, we built the tanks with donated 2x12s and 2x4s. Uh, the sides are 2x12s and uh, there's a little rim on the top and 2x4 stakes were driven into the ground here to secure them. So a lot of sledgehammer work and um, once they were in place they were lined with uh, pond liners that we bought. Well, how much land is the greenhouse on? I don't know exactly. Uh, the, I, I can figure that out and get back to you on that. It, the greenhouse itself is 56 by 75, and you can see we've got about a, oh, probably an average of about a 10 foot border around that, maybe 15. Uh, I'd have to actually figure that out before I could give you an answer. Is it the only greenhouse of its kind, or y'all do you all have more surrounding around this area? No, it's the only greenhouse of its kind. Uh, as far as I know, there's really nothing being done quite like this uh, anywhere. And um, this is our only rearing facility, and no one else is actually doing uh, raising any bugs up here now. There was a uh, A&M research project on the wildlife refuge for uh, that went for three years, and that funding has ended, and we've uh, taken up the, the torch and are going further with it. Okay, can you tell me about this property and who donated it for the greenhouse? Yes, the Morley Hudson Weevil Greenhouse is actually located on the shores of Caddo Lake. David and Sarah Smith own Shady Glade Resort and Marina, and they were kind enough to let us lease uh, the property from them to put the greenhouse on. Uh, they know that the Salvinia has had a devastating effect on their business. They have boat slips that they rent, they have rental boats, they have a restaurant that's on the water, they have many cabins that are very nice and, and their future depends on customers coming in and using their services and accessing the lake. In 2013, when the Salvinia was so bad, their business was devastated. So David and Sarah were kind enough to let us uh, use the land here right on the water so that the facility could work. We had the grass, was, the Salvinia was taken over. Uh, we had channel three, channel six, Channel 12, uh, Dallas stations, you name it down here, interviewing. Would you be able to tell us um, how much land did you donate to the greenhouse? Uh, probably about a half acre. Do you own all this property around here? No, we own just on this side of the road. Uh, there's actually only five acres all together. There's about one and a half acres on the lakeside side and then across the street we got about three and a half acres over there. How has the Sylvania affected you? Uh, financially it's uh, affected us uh, cutting down on our revenue from rentals from our uh, cabins and motel and uh, this year hadn't really been that big a deal. Last year it started first year it's really tried to affect us and it did. Uh, probably starting uh, it, middle to the end of July all the way into October. Then we had some cooler weather. Um, Texas had a pretty cold winter. We had a little bit of high water, probably about a foot and a half above spillway during the winter. And that's what opened our lake up and allowed us to have a good spring and a good summer so far. <laughs>